Hi, I'm Julie langenkamp Minkel. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of InformationManagement.com, and I'm here at TDWI's World Conference in Las Vegas, and I am joined by John Myers, who is Senior Analyst of Business Intelligence and Data Warehousing at Enterprise Management Associates. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Now, I am sure that you have been in many similar conversations like I have. Big data is part of practically every conversation mm -hmm. here at the conference. Is it overhyped or are, are, is all the attention valid? I'm going to say the answer is an equivocal yes. It is overhyped and it is valuable. I think a lot of people, uh, particularly at this particular show, are substituting big data for multi-structured data that lives in either Hadoop or some other type of NoSQL platform. Um, and I think it's very important, but I also think to a certain extent we're still feeling our way through what big data is going to mean to people. Um, Enterprise Management Associates did a survey last year. Uh, we did some re research and we found that people are doing big data in relational platforms. Uh, like the traditional data warehouses, they're also doing it in operational platforms. You know, you think about the Walmart point of sale system as a perfect example of something that has lots and lots of structured operational data that we would call big data. Um, but we also see it in terms of multi-structured stuff that you'd see in a Hadoop platform or something that might be in a JSON format in a document store. So you're seeing all these different pieces and we don't know how all these pieces quite fit together. So I think there's lots of promise. I think we're overblowing it a little bit, if you will. But I also think it's going to be very important moving forward. And it's great to hear those conversations about big data. How do we use it? How do we attack it and um, utilize it as an, as an asset. Sure. And what are the, some of the big, biggest challenges you're hearing with big data? Well, I think much like uh, data warehousing was a big change from the third normal form type of, of, of stuff. And we had, you know, a, a lot of the, the, the people who are here at the data warehousing conference are having trouble grappling with denormalized structures for analytics just as uh, people had uh, problems grappling with, you know, third normal form, moving into a multi-structured environment where the data doesn't have a structure quite yet, or it's, it's multi-structured and we haven't quite assigned a schema to it, and data quality, data cleansing aspects. So I think that the trouble's going to be how do we apply some of, those, some of those lessons learned from moving from operational systems to analytical platforms and now from analytical platforms into multi-structured platforms. So, so the problem isn't necessarily with the technology, it's, it's in evolving it. It kind is, of, yeah. I mean, you can store you know, uh, third normal form data in a database, you can store denormalized data in a database. So really, the, the technology is not that core to it. There are, there are aspects that you need to for analytical platforms, et cetera. But when we start moving to multi-structure, it's going to be about people going, well, wait a minute. What do you mean it's just a big, flat, sparsely populated table when I put it into my database, or it's a flat file? I think people need to realize if you set the Wayback Machine, to before relational databases existed, they were big flat files that were managed by key value or other types of document stores. So it's almost a little bit of back to the future, much like cloud is back to the future to the mainframe. So. Sure. Now, in your latest blog on informationmanagement.com, you mm -hmm. say that big data and, and analytics are really in their infancy of mm -hmm. what it's all about. Can you talk about some of the um, ways that people are using these currently and then some of the potential that okay. you see? Um, yeah, it, 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 I, was, I was posting, you know, someone was trying to say that nothing useful had been invented in the last 100 years. and. Uh, they said, well, maybe this big data thing might be. And I was like, well, wait a minute. You're talking about plumbing being the underpinnings of some of these things that were invented, you know, 100 years ago. We've had Hadoop for four or five years since it's come out into Apache, a little bit longer when it was involved in some of what I call the poster children of big data, you know, the Googles, the Yahoos, the et cetera. Um, so really having it out in the open domain, we're not even in double-digit years for having these concepts be out there. Um, so in that particular case, yeah, it is in its infancy. We're still learning the use cases that are great. You know, I mentioned that, that, that EMA research that I did last year. We asked a lot of questions about how are you using it? Are you using it for sentiment analysis? Are you using it for fraud detection? Are you using it for clustering? You know, all these different type of use cases and people kind of said yes. And so that shows that it's one, big data is Spe is, is not very special because it's being used in all of these different aspects, but it is special because now we're talking about a depth and a granularity of data that we haven't had before. So um, I got a chance to talk with some folks about a use case yesterday 
where they're bringing in weather data, they're bringing in crop uh, ergonomic or uh, crop uh, statistics for how crops grow, how well they grow, things of that nature, two very scientific resources. And so they're offering supplemental crop insurance where they measure the crop, you, you tell them where you are, what crops you're growing, what type of crops you're growing, they start measuring the weather in that particular environment. They can tell, you know, based on their models, how well your crops are growing, and then they measure how the weather comes in. And if you have a lot of drought and it kills off your crops, they provide you with a level of insurance against that particular kind of loss. So they're taking two very academic environments, bringing them together, creating a model. And I think we're going to see a lot of that. And, uh, you know, for better or worse, I live in Boulder, Colorado, which has uh, the National uh, Center for Atmospheric Research, NCAR, it has the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, and we have the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST. And we're going to see a lot of data come out of those groups where statisticians or climatologists or whomever has had this information, and for them it's old hat. And now they're going to say, hey, can I build a business model with that, whether that be crop insurance, whether that be looking at how cars move around the planet, you know, all these different things. And that's going to be some of the neat ways that we see big data applied. And it's going to, it'll be neat to see those kind of back office practices of climate, you know, maybe climate change. People start making money based on what they know about how climates change and how they vary, or they're variable these days. Sure, so it's an exciting, I mean, obviously the things, the potential mm -hmm. here is very exciting. Um, perhaps even beyond big data, what excites you personally about our industry right now? What kind of innovation really um, oh, do you Oh, what, ex what excites me? Um, I'm excited, and in, in, you know, we, we talked about maybe me not talking so much about technologies, but I'm excited about multi-structuring, uh, about the new schemas that are going to come along. Um, we're going to see some productization of data models and the data modelers who think themselves to be artisans may soon find themselves in the wonderful world of mass customization of product. So, you know, it'll, it'll no longer be, wait, 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 it's just a couple more touches and the data model will be done. It'll be, the data, you know, the data model looks like this, please package it up, put it on the shelf, start on the next one. You know, it, so we're going we're gonna to need to see some people who realize that speed to implementation is very important and they're going to need to be able to say, I'm going to get 80% of my value out of maybe 20% of my effort of my modeling aspect of it, productize that, but be able to make different sets of those models. There may be many different variants out there, but we're going to see some productization of it. And it's going to be disruptive. Um, it'll be kind of interesting to see how data model, how, how you know, the, the, the old school analytical data modelers are probably going to be very upset with the new school multi-structured um, uh, real-time schema application data modelers much the same way that the third normal form data modelers were upset with the analytical data modelers. What's old is new again. Exactly. I, I'd like to say that the patterns are the same. The instances are different, sure. but if you don't learn from history, you may be doomed to repeat it. So true. Thank you very much for your insights Thank and your time today. Thank you for having me. Thank you.